Greg leaving the campground and we actually got quite a good charge overnight. Uh, we unplugged once by accident about four hours in, so it's a little more than this. Um, but yeah, we've got up to 64% since last night. Yep. Boom shakalaka. What'd you plug in at? It was 20... Oh, and we started tracking all our data, so I can check here. So we plugged in, uh, it was 38% when we started. 38% to 64%. 64 when we started. 64. So that's 26% charge. Plugging in at an RV campground, it was said it was running a constant 3 kilowatt draw the whole entire time. Uh, as Nicole said, we accidentally unplugged once, uh, shifting the cable around, and then it reset everything, blah, blah, blah. That was about six kilowatts. But yeah, that gave us 30% of a battery boost camping overnight in an RV campground. Yeah, so, just for the price of camping, which was very reasonable for having full hookups. Yeah. Um, yeah, shout out to Willow Springs Resort. That was awesome. Uh, fantastic facilities there. We really enjoyed our time and visiting with the uh, camp host. It's really great. Yeah, awesome. On to Williams Lake. some interesting stuff about charging coming up from Willow Springs to here. First of all, we have a lot of stuff with us and it's heavy. <laughs> that is eating up our range. We're also learning that just with the, the accuracy that you can drive with like cruise control and highway assist and all that makes it really easy to just calibrate your speed going up and down hills for example really easy got a lot more to kind of research about it but just being able to kind of accelerate into a hill and throw yourself over it you can actually gain end up gaining power coming over the top of the hill rather than having to power up to just crest over it kind of thing you might get a little bit of neutral coasting in a gas-powered vehicle, but we're actually putting battery power back into the battery going up hills, which is pretty crazy to think yes. about. And then this little gauge here on the edge, Richard pointed that out to me. Yeah, that's the... That's measuring your... That's tracking your acceleration. So it's, as you can see, that's a very low bar right now because I'm going downhill and I'm only going 87. There's traffic. But if I say let off cruise control, you can see that go all the way green, and that's power going back into the battery. Obviously, I have to speed back up so it's not a zero sum game, but the fact that you're getting any of it now is definitely a benefit. And now you can see I'm trying to catch up, gain that speed again, and the bar is blue, which is this is how much battery power you're pulling out of the battery into your wheels. So if you accelerate slowly, bar goes up slower if you do what this baby can do <laughs> it goes all the way up <laughs> just being able to learn how to calibrate that not only for the conserve mode which was what we're typically in but also the other modes with all terrain and sport there's a towing mode as well so that's definitely going to come in handy to know what you can and cannot tow and range lost and or gain because of your momentum and the battery packs that you might have available. Yeah, it's uh, always learning with this thing. Looking forward to it. Thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe and all the other fun stuff there. There's ads, or sorry, there's links all over the place. Pick one. See you later. <laughs>
So we stopped at a fast charger in Williams Lake and we're gonna go take a peek at the lake. Here you are, Williams Lake. It's hailing. We're about to make rafts. And it's 35 so, above. Whoa, what's going on? Oh, the car stopped charging, of course. It doesn't like hail. Oh yeah, maybe we'll let it be for a minute. Should we close the charging port from like moisture coming in? Yeah, um, probably. Wow. Well, that was unexpected. It was literally just moments ago hot and sunny. I mean, I guess it's still hot. It's 34. This is some interesting weather we're coming into. <laughs> Refreshing? <sighs> what? Refreshing? Uh, that's a word, yeah. You could use that if you wanted to. Wait this one out. <laughs> Alright, this is crazy. Oh, uh oh. Can I put this in the back? Garbage? Yeah, sure. Time for a pause. Holy, okay. So we have a stream of water come in beside us on the ground. It seems like it's lightening up. That that is a little crazy. There you go. Keep you in check. The Imagination Sandwich Station. Yay. Getting creative over here. I love it. We got bread. We got smoked oysters. Cause you know. Sandwiches. Oh, they're making an appearance again. <laughs> Cucumber, avocado, hummus, and for, to and for Nicole, tomato on the side. I like my tomato on my sandwiches. That is a snack beside. Mm. Awesome little tailgate snack while we charge. In Williams Lake, we moved to a different charging station. This is a BC Hydro station and it is working much better. Oh, it is too? The other one was oh. BC Hydro station. But that one worked uh, intermittently, we'll say. We're at City Hall. It's a cool mural. And yeah, these storm clouds are very interesting. It cleared up for a bit, but uh, who knows what's coming. You want cheese, Nicole? Yeah, I'll have cheese. Are you going to have cheese? On one of my sandwiches. Not this one. Have a sandwich first. Sure, sounds good. Have a cheese. Heading into Quinnell. Crossing the Quinnell River right now. Heard a lot about this place. Apparently it's a gold panning historic site. One. Oh, gorgeous gold pan. It's got a nugget in it. Somehow I think that's probably fool's gold. I don't think that's real. I don't know, why'd you bite it? It looks real. It kind of does look real, actually. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That could be paint. That could be gold, I don't know. If that's real gold, it seems like a dumb thing to be, have right there. <laughs> 
Here we are in Quinell. It says home of the Rocky Mountaineer. Gold Rush Central right here. Oh, look at that. This critters to find at Quinnell. All right, back on the road we go. Go check in to the Billy Barker Casino Hotel. Historic. So oh, this is the Billy Barker Hotel. Uh, we're right at the back and there's a Leviton free charging station. Uh, in the parking spot we have a non-EV vehicle. So we just parked on, on the lines. Seems like the right thing to do. Either way, we're getting a charge. It says, uh, what, eight hours, nine hours. So complete, which means we can just plug in overnight. Hooray. And uh, yeah. Get inside, get some some work done, and catch up for going camping for the weekend. Sound good, Richard? Awesome. <laughs> and Richard's just reading an article about Ford. Check this out. Ford is partnering with Tesla, which means new... Well, I'm super zoomed on your face again. There we go. It's different pieces of different videos, right? Okay, you want me to stop that, that one? one? Stop that one. Like. So I was just reading an article here. This is posted on the Electric Vehicle Association uh, Facebook page here. That Ford EV customers are going to gain access to approximately 12,000 Tesla superchargers. How are they going to do that? Ford just made the decision that their future built vehicles are going to use the Tesla charging plug to access charging stations along with the adapters for all the other plugs rather than build it on the standardized plug that the rest of the industry has been using but Tesla has its own plug for. So Tesla essentially is selling access to their charging network to Ford and now there's Ford and Tesla we're going to be leading the way with that charging plug, still in the like VHS beta battle kind of thing. <laughs> and now it's going to really indicate where the industry is going to go because those are two huge players and everybody else is on one standard plug. These two are going to be using the Tesla plug, so we'll see where that goes. So what do you think that means for us? Are we going to get an adapter to use these Tesla chargers anytime soon? It exists. It exists. It's hard to find and they're expensive, but it exists. Really? I've seen a couple of articles like where Tesla has done a software update that closed off specific types of adapter plugs. So like you could plug it in for a little bit and then they ran a software update. Boom. You could no longer use that plug. So people rejigged it, rewired it, reprogrammed it, came out with another plug plugged in with that and then Tesla said nope we're not doing that anymore sent a software update to all the stations boom those charger ports don't work either so huh. you gotta be uh gotta be quick on the ball on that one but we'll see how that all kind of plays out unless it's like a Tesla branded adapter yeah yeah they're not really allowing much third-party usage on that one but is there a Tesla branded adapter I think so I, it's like I said they're hard to find hard to find expensive. okay well perhaps in the future we'll be able to get one Awesome.